Welcome to Top 10 Archive. Though Scientology is over 60 years old, it wasn't until the mid-2000s that it started to garner a lot of media attention. The attention has spanned from general critiques about the belief system to downright labeling the religion as a strong cult. Regardless of personal opinion on the Church of Scientology, it's difficult to deny that it does have a rather interesting history that was chronicled in HBO's Going Clear documentary. In this installment, we're going to dive into L. Ron Hubbard's creation and siphon out 10 of the most interesting tidbits about the church, its beliefs, and some of its sordid past. Number 10, The Human Spirit. Until HBO's Going Clear, chances are if you ask anyone to recite what the Church of Scientology truly believes at its roots, few would have been able to answer. Truth be told, many of these people probably have heard the belief system, but maybe attributed it as the plot of the next Ridley Scott movie. According to the Church of Scientology's belief system, a human's physical form is just a shell for a thetan, or spirit, that makes up the person's core self. The thetan is the mind of the human, and all physical components are just aspects that it controls. The human body is thought to be a shell that the thetan moves on from after the physical form expires. Number 9. Thetans and Telekinesis when an individual reaches the higher statuses of operating Thetan, closer to what is considered a supreme being, it is believed that the Thetan inside the human body can function without the nuances of physical form. What this boils down to is that the church believes we are able to achieve such a level of clear that we can be telekinetic. The concept even made headlines when it was alleged by the Church of Scientology in 2012 that the religion's poster boy, Tom Cruise, had reached such a level of operating Thetan that he was a telekinetic. Of course, there are those that believe the Church will use Cruise for any means of propaganda. Number 8. The True Belief System Was Once Hidden There was a time when even members of Scientology didn't quite understand the true belief system of their church. Scientology, that's... I didn't know it was like that. I thought it was something else. And you're like, yeah, it's not. Before the wonders of the internet and the mainstreaming of Scientology, people initially signed on with the intention of achieving a state of clear, which is basically a state of mental cleanliness. Once one reached the status of clear, they would start a journey of the operating Thetan, which essentially is when Hubbard's belief of Xenu and the alien Thetans is made known. When a member reached level three of the operating Thetan scale, they would receive, in secret, a copy of Hubbard's handwritten notes and manual that detailed Xenu and his genocide of Thetans. Number seven, Scientologists generally shy away from Xenu. Once a follower in Scientology reaches operating Thetan level three, they are provided Hubbard's writings that tell of an ancient being, Xenu, the dictator of the Galactic Confederacy that brought billions of life forms to Earth only to slaughter them with hydrogen bombs. The spirits of these life forms, according to Hubbard, are the Thetans that inhabit us today. What is most surprising about this school of thought is that Scientologists today do everything they can to sweep it under the rug. L. Ron Hubbard said that understanding the origins of the human race as described through Xenu and the intergalactic emperor. Is it true that somebody would die in Pepsi Lake? In 1997, after a judge mentioned Xenu, Scientology lawyers fought to have the ruling sealed. When the higher being is referred to by Scientologists, it is simply referred to as something that only after years of study can be understood. Number six, disconnecting. For some religions, when believers encounter a person that is either antagonistic or oppressive against their belief system, they try even harder to convert that individual. Scientology has what comes across as a no-tolerance policy for these types of individuals and suggests that its followers disconnect with the suppressive individuals. What constitutes a suppressive person? Typically, they're viewed as anyone that speaks against Scientology, practices the religion outside of the Scientology umbrella organization, 
takes legal action against Scientology or even just associates with other suppressive individuals. When one disconnects, they completely cut that person out of their lives to avoid having their progress towards clear hindered in any emotional way. Disconnection knows no boundaries, as members of the church have been known to disconnect from even close family members. Number five, the fight for tax exemption. Scientology wasn't always considered a religion. In fact, despite the official declaration by the United States government, there are still those that question whether or not it requested and earned its status as a recognized religion for the right reasons. During a lengthy battle with the Internal Revenue Service, leading members of Scientology fought to keep the tens of millions of dollars owed in taxes to the IRS. As the IRS upheld its 25-year judgment that Scientology was a commercial enterprise, the church utilized guerrilla tactics to get the federal agency to change its mind. The church conducted surveillance operations on individual IRS employees to uncover secrets within their private lives and publicly attacked the agency. The IRS was facing a massive smear campaign and in what seemed like a waving of the white flag, on October 8, 1993, finally agreed to officially recognize Scientology as an exempt organization. On October the 1st, 1993, at 8.37 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the IRS issued letters recognizing Scientology and every one of its organizations as fully tax exempt. The war is over! Number four, Germany refuses to recognize Scientology as a religion. Though the United States recognizes Scientology as a religious organization, the rest of the world is not so accepting. The church has had a presence in Germany since the 1970s, but that hasn't been due to a mutual relationship. In fact, Germany is quite outwardly opposed to the existence of the church. German press and the country's government have been known to speak out against Scientology and regard the organization as an abusive business under the guise of a religion. There is strong dissent against the church within the country to the point where posters had been publicly posted, though later ordered removed, warning the public of Scientology's hidden dangers. Despite the battle it had put up against Scientology, the United States government now criticizes Germany for its stance against the religion, showcasing hypocrisy at its finest. Number three, France considers it a cult. Like Germany, there are still countries that hold a very negative viewpoint, though some are a bit more brazen and forceful with their negative opinion. Unlike the United States, France has deemed that the Church of Scientology is a dangerous cult. Fraud and embezzlement have been charged against some of its leading members, but possibly the most sinister of accusations is the church's link with the suicide of Norwegian student Kaya Balo. No charges were brought against the church, but the case did not help the country's already negative viewpoint. Number two, the church is worth over $1.2 billion. The thought of a church worth anything more than just its religious value may sound a little absurd, but it's not really all that uncommon. Some attribute the massive worth of Scientology to the likes of celebrity spokespeople like John Travolta and Tom Cruise. But regardless of how the money was earned, a 990-T exempt organization business income tax uncovered in April of 2014 showed that two of its affiliated organizations showed a value of over $1 billion. The 990T for the Church of Scientology International listed the book value of all its assets at the end of 2011 at almost $800 million. To put things in perspective, though, in 2012, the Catholic Church spent around $170 billion in one year alone. Number 1. Hubbard was an alleged abuser. Scientologists praise Hubbard for his ideals and salute him during large congregations, but the general public may have a different viewpoint on Scientology's creator. Hubbard's second wife, Sarah Northrup, divorced the writer after a six-year marriage, but court documents don't paint the divorce as some clean mutual agreement. According to Northrup, Hubbard was an abusive man. She alleged that Hubbard would try to make her commit suicide to avoid divorce proceedings. She also claimed he kept her sleep deprived, nearly strangled her to death, 
and ran over her with their car. One of his more famous feats against Sarah was the kidnapping of their child, Alexis. Hubbard had taken Alexis to Havana, Cuba, and was said to have called Sarah, claiming he had murdered their daughter, all as part of a sadistic mind game as Alexis was alive and well with him.